I did the Facebook Live on Saturday. That went really well. And I'm so grateful to all of you who, who joined. It's continuing to get views, which is, is really nice. So fear DNA. I think the first thing for us to, to ask is, if there's fear DNA, where does that come from? And how does fear, fear DNA link to emotional DNA? And with emotional DNA, it's what I call your collection of your patterns of thoughts, actions, feelings. These together come from events that have occurred and the events have given you thoughts, feelings, you take actions to support those. You then begin to create a mindset which becomes the truth only it's not the truth. It's just your truth. And you can change that anytime you want to. And right now, of course, we're in the middle of, of a time and um, incredible global event where we start to realize that we are creating thoughts. We are fearful. We are stressed. For some of us, it's great opportunity, right? We're looking at it going, oh, good. What can I do here? What can I do here? But the biggest thing of all is that right now, you're not inheriting fear DNA. You're actually creating it as well. And those are some of the unique pivot points at global times like this. They're super important because what you begin to create now is going to color who you become very shortly. So when we look at inheriting emotional DNA, how does that happen? Emotional DNA is inherited when we have an event. An event creates, uh, an event creates an, a situation in which you start to think. And as you start to think, you start to have feelings about the thoughts that you're, you're uh, thinking. And then you start to have more thoughts. And this is the way that we begin to create your emotional DNA. Why is that so important now? During something like a global pandemic, we're, we're suddenly going to begin telling ourselves, I'm afraid or I'm capable. I can do this or I can't do this. I am going to sink or I'm going to swim. And what we want to do is begin to understand that we are not victims in a whimsical universe. We are absolutely co-creators in a very logical and supportive universe. And some of that begins with our family systems. So with our family systems, we have these events that create the language and, and create the thought patterns and the action patterns and the language patterns. And again, this begins to become what we call emotional DNA. And emotional DNA, by the way, covers a whole multitude of subjects. We have relationship DNA. We have um, emotional DNA. We have fear DNA. We have success and failure DNA. We have purpose DNA. So all of this gets filtered down and we inherit it. And then we begin to think it's us. And often it's not. Again, if we look at a moment like this in time, we're actually simply repeating a meta event in the system. So we've had the 1920 flu. And by the way, there is the most beautiful commercial that I saw for the first time this morning uh, of a lady who was talking about, of course, we can get through this. My mother had me and she was all alone. And she goes through this whole scenario. And she's actually a, uh, one of the, the children who was born in, during the 1920 pandemic. And it's such a hopeful message. And, and that's what we want to look for more. How do we build that DNA? So how do we take our fear DNA and begin to transform it into something that really serves us well? And her message was, look at me. I'm, I'm 90 years old. I'm doing fine. Um, I'm, I'm not just a survivor. She's really done well. And we want to begin programming that for ourselves. So when, when I work with leaders or when I work with teams, we have a system that most people will refer to as the head heart gut. It's actually the heart head gut. And it works this way. When the heart begins to feel, if there's an event, our first thing that happens is we feel and the heart either opens or closes. As soon as the heart closes, the mind closes. 
So it's not that you have a closed mind, it's that you have a closed heart. But the mind closes and goes into survival. Now it's not thinking about picking poppies out in a lovely poppy field. It's about how do I get the next meal on the table? Or as a coach, how on earth am I going to retain clients where they don't even have disposable income? Um, how is my practice going to flourish? What's happening to me? These are all things that begin to shut us down. So as soon as the heart shuts, the mind shuts. And then, of course, our gut tenses up and we're off to the races, right? And this is difficult. In a time like this, if we are mindful of what's happening for us, if you begin to go back to your family system and you look at the events that have created shifts in the family for good or for bad, you're going to see that you are beginning to repeat some of them. Or you're going to choose to be the change agent. And if you choose to be the change agent, you need to understand how. So what I want you all to do is I want you to think of the one thing that's bothering you right now, the one issue that you have that's creating fear for you in the middle of this pandemic, this situation. And if anybody wants to share, we're going to actually take a look at that and see what mindset has been created, what thought patterns are there, how you're creating fear DNA, and how we begin to flip that for you so that you can use it in a way that serves you. So if any of you have something that you'd like to share, people say, we have to let people go. We have to furlough. We're going to shut down, which sounds like a sensible idea. Fear of losing job. Great. Thank you, Anand. Okay, so I'm going to break into that. Fear of losing job. Or it, can you say a little bit more about that? Oh, and fear that clients won't have budget for coaching or team building. So what will be my income source? So I'm going to tackle both of those. Let's have a look at the fear of losing job. What you want to do immediately that pops up is, where does that come from? Have I lost a job before? Have I moved to this new country and I've just started building things up and I could lose everything? Is that your thought? Or is that fear DNA that you've inherited? Who in your family may have lost a job? Who in your family thought they were safe and suddenly they were not? Is this really your fear DNA or does it belong to someone else? And if I look at, at um, the fear of losing a job, what happens to me if I lose that job? What is the worst part of losing that job? Will I never again be able to find a job? Am I going to get stuck? Am I a loser? Is this, are we going to starve? I'm going to ask you again, where does that come from? Is it your fear DNA or does that come down from, from the system before you? Now, if I look at the fear of losing a job, I know that there are also different places and spaces out there. And I would wonder, is there perhaps a thought around, I wonder what new job I could get. Right now, we're stuck in the fear of instead of the opportunity mindset, right? Because we're, that's what we're geared to do. We're geared to go into the survival brain. But if we begin to look at, I wonder what's possible here, you might ask yourself, if I lose this job, is there an opportunity for me to get one that pays better or serves me, serves me even more? Okay, fear of losing job is more like not performing well working from home. Thank you. So is there a fear that I'm not self-motivated enough to work from home or my presence is what lets people understand that when I'm there, I'm doing a job. Now, if they can't see me, how will they know? So this is a shift, right? Now, you, now it's not just about your presence. Now it's about what can you deliver? So it's more like a shift in what can I deliver? I think that would, would that be uh, fair to say? What can I deliver from home? Is there something that I need from home? So, so now what you're also looking at is what resources would I need to be able to work from home? Now, now we're shifting from fear of not being able to work well to how can I? 
what, do I, what can I do that's going to allow me to do this and do it well? I want to come back to the, ah. So, so I'm going to just keep going with, with um, Arnon's at the moment, if you don't mind. I definitely see I'm ashamed of my dad. I always thought he was a good performer. So can you just go a little bit into the being ashamed of dad, even though he was a good performer? And then while we do, while I'm waiting for that response, uh, okay, bad performer, sorry. Okay, bad performer. You always thought he was a bad performer. So notice the judgment right there, right? Um, fear of being a bad performer, just like my dad. So notice right there how you've borrowed from your, your, your dad and that's become your fear. And is that yours? Right now, if you were to put that down and you know how hard you work, can you turn that around and say, that's not mine and I had a perspective he was a bad performer. I know I'm a good performer. And by the way, thanks dad, because I watched how you worked, I could do it differently. So again, we go back to the system and we see how we can be super grateful for even what looks like a rough pattern. Yes, dad may not have looked like a good performer. It ignited in me the deep desire to be a brilliant performer. I can do that. Oh goodness, we've just had a crash. We're working from home. Now how will people know that I'm a good performer? I need to shift my skills so that they can see a new way in which I'm a really good performer. Great. Okay. So, yay, Dad. And now you're able to turn it around and say, of course I can do this. I'm a good performer. I can, I can take my skills. And guess what? If maybe Dad couldn't adapt, which is another option, right? I can. So that one is, is a nice reframe for you. And when you begin to realize that, you will rewire into your brain, even in a downturn. I know how to perform well. I am not repeating dad for dad who couldn't. I'm going to do it differently. Now, I want to flip to the next one, if that's okay, and talk about the fear DNA around clients not having a budget uh, for team building. Um, so what's going to be my income source? Right now is exactly when your clients need to start team building. So one of the things you want to show them is the advantages of getting out ahead of the curve now. And in fact, with a number of my clients, they're saying, how do we come out being the leaders? And that's what you want to talk about. We're in a situation where there's a ton of opportunity for us to help people to start building their own confidence back, to start building new options, to start moving in the direction of what can we do differently. And I will tell you that one of the things that I'm hearing from many clients is I know that I've got to become more customer centric. So it's teaching people what, what's needed now from, from coaches very much is the soft skills. How are we going to teach people that who I am is as important as what I do. So in your coaching and them not having a budget, I would invite you to just very gently show them where your value add is, um, how you're not a fear DNA component, you really are a good solution. In fact, you're a great solution because you're going to help them to come out ahead of the curve. And what you want to do is shift into what is going to be the new differentiator? And once you identify that new differentiator and present that to your clients, you're giving them hope, direction, and a new way forward. So please let me know if, if that um, addresses that for you. And then I had another one, which was not being able to create a new source of income after losing my job. Now, as it happens, I've, I've met the person who asked that question. And the one thing that I do know about this person is that they have entrepreneur DNA. Totally have it. They came over from a very different place, reinvented themselves here. And it sounds like you, uh, you are at a stage of reinventing yourself again. And, and so I would wonder, is this a pattern in the system? 
is it almost a fear DNA that you use to be able to shift yourself? Um, so, so does your fear DNA actually turn into an igniter for you? And if it's an igniter for you, I would also offer the following. You may want to look at a slightly different way of getting yourself brave because that can be very, very tiring. So notice right there where you're scared that you won't be able to recreate yourself. This is not really true for you. You've already done it a couple of times. It's, wow, do I have to do it again? And I would wonder what would want to shift for you that would allow you to say, I have thrival DNA. I, I am able at any point to turn this around by turning around my thoughts and my feelings, beginning with my feelings, by the way, feelings, thoughts, and that feeling in the pit of my stomach. So I would ask you, what is it like when you get to the other end where you know I've actually survived this, I've come out on top, um, I've managed to put myself in a really good position. And what you want to do is shift from focusing on the, oops, I'm in trouble, to, hey, I know how to do this. I'm really good at doing this. In fact, I have a skill set around being able to recreate myself project after project after project. And um, your fear DNA is then going to become your igniter or your passion DNA. So right there in the moment, in the middle of all of this mess, you're now creating order. You're an order creator. And the order creation is going to, uh, if you take it into your body, into your, your heart, your gut, your head, is going to shift you into become somebody, becoming somebody who's highly competent. And this is very much what I'm seeing during this pandemic. We're rapidly sorting ourselves out into people who can use this to flourish and people who think the end of the world has come. The good news, bad news is the end of the world as you know it may have come, but the beginning of the world as you can create it is also here. And if you start to work on your, your language, your feelings, your actions, you're going to find that if you look at, and, and this is what we use when I have events and workshops, go and look at what's happening. So, so what is our, our reveal piece, right? What is the pattern that's sitting there for me yet again? So what is the pattern? That's our reveal. Acknowledging. So acknowledging what is. I'm scared right now. I'm terrified I'm, I may lose my job. Then moving to, so what is possible here? Do I have to repeat that? Or can I shift myself, my, my heart, my thoughts, my actions into a different direction? And if you think it's not about uh, feelings, thoughts, and, and actions, sit down and have a look again. Who you tell yourself you are, you will become. This is something we know from family systems. 90% of the time you're operating on the history of your family. You're actually living the history of your family. You're not living your, your own future. So, so you are reliving their history. You're not creating where you need to move. And systems are highly specific creatures. They create events like these so that the system can start shifting and you in it. So right now, you are it. You're the change agent. You're the possibility. How do we look at that in events? What we would do is we have a look at the issue that you've just brought. And again, keep those, those issues coming if you have them. Um, but we look at the issue you've just brought. And then what we do is a thing called dimensionalizing. Some of you will know this is constellations work. So we take, we break it down into all the components of the issue. And we represent those components because here's the other piece that is super helpful for us in this day and age. When you can see a representative for each part of your issue in front of you, instead of trying to solve it all here in your head, which is what we tend to do, and then come up with this sort of mess or psychological mess, when you can literally see it in front of you, using post-it notes or live representatives, 
and we begin to ask the questions and have the conversations about what do you think? Where did that come from? What did you make it mean? How is that limiting you or liberating you? Now we can move. So when we talk about dimensionalizing it, in, in live events, you would see me choose representatives for, for the various components of your issue. And then we would start having those conversations. And what happens for you is you're integrating multiple senses. So now you're seeing, feeling, experiencing, embodying with, with a whole host of, of senses. And we know that when you use a multi-sensorial approach, suddenly you, you make better decisions. You've got a better sense of what's happening to you and for you. And when we then extend that into multiple generations, and we look at, did it happen to me? Did it happen to my father and my grandfather and my great-grandfather? Now we can also begin to spot the patterns. And patterns are actually a governing force in our physical universe. We respond to those quite unconsciously, but very powerfully. And again, often your fear is not your fear. Your anger is not your anger. You, you borrowed it from great uncle, who's it? And, and you made it yours. And you want to put some of that down. Because when you can put down what's not yours, there is space for you to open up to what is yours and what you can create. And this is where you begin to create your own chapter, a new chapter. I'm going to pause just very briefly and ask if there are any questions and if you'd pop them up on chat. Uh, yes, it's not your truth anymore. And, and thank you for saying that because that truth is so important. What we make our truth becomes the truth. Again, it's not the truth. It's just our truth. And the most important piece is that you can change that any time you want to. And when I work with clients and they say to me, you mean if I, if I just change my, my mind, things are going to change? Yes. When you change your thoughts and your feelings, your mind begins to go in a different direction. Now you've switched on the creative brain. You're now no longer in the, the, the reactor brain. You're in creative brain, which means you're going to see more opportunities. You're going to align with your ability to create better or think better. You're going to be aware of what's out there that you can respond to. You're not caught in the fabric of the systemic trance. Um, and you will know if you're caught in, in a systemic trance because it feels familiar. It feels like there's nothing different I can do. Why am I even stressing? It's happening to everybody. No, no. This work teaches you that you are completely capable of designing upskilling, retooling, and having the life that you truly want. And it begins with your family and it trickles down until it gets to you. And what you do with what is there is what's going to determine your success, your failure, your financial worth or not worth. Um, this all rests on family patterns and what you have told yourself about what is going on in your universe or in your life. So if we, if we go back to our fear DNA and we go back to the world is a scary place right now and we go back to where are the jobs and, and what are we going to do about that? The jobs are there. The jobs are simply waiting for you to see them. The jobs are waiting for you to say yes. The clients are there. They're saying to you, you can't approach me the same way as you always have but you can approach me, I need you. And I need you a lot. And I need you to come and coach me, but I need to understand how I need you. I need you to perform. And I need to, here's, here's a beautiful thing for, for the person who said, what about if I don't perform well from home? You're about to upskill yourself in a whole new way. You're about to tell yourself how capable you are, whether people are watching or not. You're about to become a great performer and love that you don't need somebody behind you going, good kid, good kid. Now it's, I'm satisfied with what I'm doing. And let me tell you, the minute you start being satisfied with what you're doing, you're going to put in even more. You're going to find more ways to make a difference. 
you're going to move from what your family thought was success to your success. And it's going to be bigger. You're going to move from feeling stuck to feeling a whole lot unlimited. You're going to move from multi-generational repetition to now, at this moment in time, being the creator of the new DNA in your system and in your family system and in your organizational and career system. And, and I just want to go back because I'm so tickled by, by this. My father wasn't a good performer. You want to go back and have a look. If your father didn't seem like he was a good performer, have a look at his father and see what that was like too. Was his father a better performer or less of a performer? Because either way, you have something to take from even further back. In addition, you also have something different. You're defining performing very differently to the way your father may have defined performing. And if your father defined it as this is my cap, how wonderful that you're, you're impatient to outperform that. The way that the world evolves and the way that you evolve is through wants. And people are terrified of their wants. We grew up in a world that says, don't be greedy. Don't ask for too much. Don't want too much. And then we hear the, the things like, it's greedy. Uh, I'll just be disappointed. Um, it's never going to happen for me again. Where did those thoughts come from? What was the moment in which you gave yourself, because you did, or you borrowed from somebody, the limiting thoughts that switched you off or turned you down? Sometimes it's parents, sometimes it's multiple generations, sometimes it's teachers. Um, I think one of my favorites are, are the two students who walk in and the teacher says, you're a terrible artist, please don't ever go and paint, you'll never make a living, you should quit. One of them quits and the other one becomes Picasso. What are we listening to that's either going to grow us or limit us? And if we look at money, and a lot of the fear DNA, by the way, at the moment, is around money, then you're in one of my favorite areas. Because those of you who've worked with me know that I love teaching um, money DNA. I love it. Money is a living, breathing entity, and we teach it as, as though it were an inanimate nothing. I love, thank you, Anand, your grandfather was a priest who was very, very poor. You might say, in his case, he didn't perform very well if you were looking at it financially. Or you might say he performed incredibly because he ministered to souls. He saved souls. He, he enabled other people to do well. What's happened for you is your grandfather may have been very poor as a priest. Your dad may have been poor as whatever he did, but not as poor. And now you're getting to, to being even less that way. In fact, you're starting to, to wander into that beautiful land of success and you're terrified you're going to go back to that pattern. And you could. You could say me too, just like grandfather and dad. We never reached our potential. Or oh, this is where you look at this and go, uh, no, no. Right now, I'm about to do this very differently. I've already outperformed what I saw as a child. What else can I add? What else can I do that's going to allow me to feel really good about me? And by the way, thanks, grandfather, for ministering to the souls who could do better. Thanks, dad, for showing me as well that I wanted more. Both of those men have given you a very solid base of want. Yay! They've given you, um, they've given you a solid fear DNA to build into an igniter DNA. And if you begin to pay attention to your wants, you're going to start seeing that you want a lot and you'll move in that direction because you will make it happen. This will not set you back. Start, start seeing the things that you're saying to yourself, like, I'm scared. Maybe we go back to that pattern. Maybe there's poverty. And I want you to flip it around and say, there was poverty. There was less. Now there's me. How far am I taking it? What do I want? What does that look like? How am I able to do that? And start looking for the resources that are going to help you to do that. 
Um, what is emotional DNA and why do you need it as a professional? Oh, dear Lord, thank you for that question. Why do you need emotional DNA as a professional? If you don't use emotional DNA, you're literally looking at your clients through a very, very narrow wedge. If you only ever ask them about their careers and what they do and what they want in career, you're missing their big why. You're missing why they went into that career and there are always super interesting stories around why they did. What was the moment in which they decided, I'm going into that? Even, even Arne and you, why did you decide, I don't want to be poor like the rest and I don't want to perform badly? What did you see that became the gift or, or the, the fertile soil that said, I must do more? So now with emotional DNA and, and clients, the minute you start looking into the family system, it's, it's not all the family dynamics and psychology. and the, the, These are patterns and they're precious patterns because who you are at home translates directly across to how you are as a leader at work or who you are at work, whether it's in reaction to your family system or in collusion with. So when I'm working with clients and leaders, I do a, a very deep dive into their family system. And people are always astonished when I say that. They say, nobody's going to tell you all their stuff, they tell me all their stuff. Because I explain to them very carefully, if we understand what's happening in your family system, we know that there is a gift in that. It may not have been unwrapped yet, but there is something in that that we need to understand in order to resource you over here as a professional. And if we don't know what's over there including not just gifts but pitfalls we don't know why you continually stumble or hit a brick wall but as soon as we do know we know how to get over that brick wall and when we get over that brick wall beyond the brick wall is an amazing place i'll see you there sorry Rumi, but this is where we're heading um it's super important to get a hold of their emotional dna not only does it grow them as a professional it grows them even deeper as a person. And when you begin to work with leaders and they begin to understand that the professional is deeply dependent on the personal too, they begin to settle. There's a peace that happens. There's a, there's a growing that happens. People can suddenly see the hope, the direction, the possibility. They stop telling themselves all the things and feeling all the things that take them down and now they begin to generate and become their own recipe for success. And when you're your own recipe for success and you look back and you look at all the excuses and all of the, the, the things you've told yourself and you start to realize where you've come, life looks very different. You also begin to realize, which is good and bad, that you are responsible for the way it turns out. So yes, events happen. And yes, it's what you're going to do with those events that's going to determine whether you succeed or fail. You, you've all actually seen this over and over again. You have somebody who is in a terrible accident and uh, they're paralyzed from the waist down or the neck down and that's the end. Only it's not. This somehow, they take on board a very different mindset that says, watch me. I can do stuff with this, watch me. And they begin to plot their way there. And every single one of you, one of us, is capable of that. Transformation is not and never was limited to a special, chosen, elite, amazing few. It's yours, but you have to choose it. And it's contained within your emotional DNA. And your success is contained within your fear or success DNA. Which one are you going to choose? And no, it's not, oh, gee, that sounds easy. It is mindful. It is embodied. It is impactful. And by now, I've worked with way too many people to know that this, to think that it doesn't work. It works. The minute that they start to see who they really are, not who they think they are based on patterns before them, the doors open. So let's go back to what will I do about clients and how are they going to see that they need me?
it's lovely. You've just, you've just hit a brick wall and if you back up two meters or two yards here, you're going to see that you're simply at the rise to the next step up. That's all. You're being asked to bring something more of value. You're being asked to create a little bit more of you and your clients are stuck. You're actually the way through for many of them. They're asking you, please be our future eyes. Please tell us where we need to, to head. If you look at the patterns that are present at the moment, we have people who are not working or, or, or contained at, at a workplace. So how would it be once you can get them together or do you need to do that virtually? How is virtual going to be fun? Ask us. I know Cheryl very kindly let us know this morning that Sapna and I were sharing all sorts of information while we tried getting the tech online. I know that for me, the minute that I heard that, my first thought was, oh, oh goodness, I haven't got it perfect. It has to be perfect. No, I have to take a step and I have to change. And I have to take a step and I have to change. And in my family where it's called do it and do it right, whose definition of right is it? I've got to look at do what works. And that's begun to change for me. So now it's not about it has to be perfect. It's about how far can I take this? What do I need to add? I'm moving out of am I enough? I can't play that game. That's, that's a multiple generations ago pattern. For me, it's about how can I be enough? What am I feeling when I'm doing this? Getting onto Zoom, getting onto Facebook. Let me tell you, anybody who knows anything about neuroplasticity, my brain is exploding at the moment. It's learning all sorts of new patterns. But the thing is, I had a moment. <coughs> I, I had a moment when I thought, do I stop and do I quit? Maybe this has just gone past me. And then luckily for me, my other DNA kicked in and said, really, you're done with adventures? And no, I love adventure. So I would invite all of you to see this as a way to begin creating success DNA. I'm going to ask you again, if you have questions for me now, please let me have them. And no, by the way, this is not, again to reiterate, this is not a mind exercise. This is teaching yourself what lives in my system, how does it limit or liberate me, what do I need to put down, and what do I need to start emerging through me. So in systemic work, you will, you will often hear me talk about the pattern that wants to rest, which in, in Arnon's case would be, I don't want to be scared of being poor anymore. I don't want to be scared that I'm not enough anymore. To my family gave me a solid enough kick that I can look at myself and know that I've already walked a distance and I can keep walking. I may have to adapt a bit. This is life, but I can do this. Somebody's just asked me, could I talk about fear and COVID? Sure. Fear and COVID at the moment, a lot of people are, are afraid of, will I die? Will I get this? What if I do? Is society gone? What are we going to do now? At all of the greatest moments in history, we've had a shift where enough people have said, we can do this. In fact, we're in one of the greatest countries in the world for reinventing itself. It has a can-do spirit that tends to go into hibernation, but in times like this, it starts to reinvent itself. And it may look clumsy to begin with, and it may not be elegant to begin with, but it finds all sorts of possibilities and technologies and ways to do things. And this is, this is what I, I see for, for all of us during COVID. Now, there is another very important piece. As a society and as humanity, we fragmented. We think that we're all different countries. Right now, we have this amazing opportunity, which we may not necessarily have chosen on our own, but if we don't cooperate, things could get a lot worse. If we all start to cooperate, so it's not about my freedom and you're doing things to me, if we all start to collaborate and cooperate, we can find a way through this. 
and we will. It's a question of, do we want to lose a lot? Or do we want to start getting back together as a global society? And it's interesting, if you look at it systemically, a system knows there are times and places where things should be separated out and times where things need to be brought together. And right now, at a time where the world is, as I said, so fragmented, we're being brought back together. We're being brought back into balance. If you watch nature, nature, and I'm, I know that most of you will have heard this and seen this, but in, in places like Venice, they have fish and dolphins swimming in the canals again. That hasn't happened in, in decades. Things have a way of balancing if we allow them and if we begin to work with them. And if in ourselves, we begin to realize first, I am enough. I am here for a very good reason. I have emotional DNA right now that if I create mindfully and carefully, I can turn into my personal success and powerhouse. I can use it to help others. I'm going to be part of a solution. And that is the mind switch that during COVID we need to be making. You need to be seeing yourself as highly capable in the middle of a switch which can feel like a slip on a banana peel what am i going to do differently now somebody let me know that beth has a question beth i'm not seeing you but if you could type it for me i'd be more than happy to answer you so if you just type it in the chat box i will pick that up and i'd like to know if there are still outstanding questions that i haven't addressed when, when we talk about, by the way, changing our emotional DNA, it's looking first at what I tell myself. Then it's looking at as well, what do I feel about what I'm telling myself? Then your next layer is, what have I made that mean? In Arnon's case, maybe I'm a poor performer. No. What have I made that mean? Then what do I want to make this mean that is differently possible? What can I feel? One feeling, just one feeling that is very different, that's going to allow me to breathe again. And as I breathe, can I notice what one new thought am I going to have? Because here's the deal. If you have one new thought, one new feeling, and you take one new action, literally, the future that you thought you were headed towards is no longer the future, future that's in front of you. It takes one, one new thought, one new feeling, one new action. Now you've changed the DNA from behind you and you're creating the DNA that you want ahead of you. And when you begin with that, just that one simple piece, if you will take the time to tell you to feel one new different feeling, by the way, for those of you who always say to me, that's fine, what the heck am I supposed to, to use to do this? Gratitude. Gratitude. For what am I grateful right now? Even if I'm scared, even if I'm struggling, what is the one thing that I can be grateful for? Because the minute we can be grateful, it starts to pull us again out of the reactive brain and into the creative brain. So if you can, if you can have that one new feeling and you can think one new thought, and you can sense that in your gut and embody it. Now you're changing your predictable, your, your past that would have been your predictable future is no longer. Now the game is on for you. Now you can change it into what you want. You know, I'm, I'm struck often by the fact that, that sages told us that we have everything we need. We do. Watch yourself. Your body is an elegant creature. When you're in the middle of fear, your stomach squeezes, your heart closes, your brain fogs down, you can't think at all. But the minute that you allow yourself to get back into balance by first feeling one new feeling, by thinking one new thought, the minute you, you begin to follow that new thought and that new feeling, the next thing that happens is your gut relaxes. And when that's happening, you're literally no longer stuck. You're literally no longer limited. Now you will figure it out. 
you're coming into alignment with a part of you that knows how to create. And we all have it. It is, again, it is not some nebulous thing out there. You know, and it comes from your wants. So the other piece that I'm going to ask you to do is during this time, during fear DNA's time and COVID's time, I want you to write down your wants. I don't care how out there they feel, how impossible they may be. I want you to write down those wants and I want you to begin wanting them with all your might. Because the more you invest in them, the more you turn off your obstacles. And as you turn off the obstacles, the more you turn on your solution focused mind, which means you can head in the direction you want. Now, we teach a lot of this during the events that I offer around the world and throughout the year. The next one that we're offering is, and we will go into detail with the, the orders in systems, the principles in systems, where they came from, how they shape you, what they look like when we start to dimensionalize them. You're going to see how you can use them to be able to change your life, to be able to um, upskill and upscale, and to be able to design the success you want. And the first one that we're doing is the online one at the end of the month, May 29th through 31st. And this is going to be, for those of you who thought you'd get off light and easy, it's going to be three full days. And what we will do is we'll go through theory, we'll go through some of the exercises so that you, you get familiar with it or become familiar with this. You'll have really good knowledge and then we'll go into constellations and yes, I'm going to be doing them virtually. Um, and I've been standing on my head to get those to work, but we have it nailed. So we're going to do that one. That's the first one in May. Then in September, we'll move across to Relationships DNA. And with any luck, we'll actually be in Houston. Otherwise, it's going to be we go back online and we keep making this happen. Because I could say, well, we're losing the physical component of it. But what I'm going to tell you is I have noticed for myself that during my coaching where it's more virtual, I'm paying more attention and I am picking up things that I never knew I would notice. And of course, throughout, throughout all of this, you're going to be using this knowledge that you accumulate to be able to teach your clients. So these are practical applications that you can take in tomorrow and teach your clients, bearing in mind that the practical application begins with you. You have to start embodying it yourself. You have to start teaching people how to speak multi-generational and pattern language. When you can do that fluently, you can show them how to move from stuck to thriving. Your clients will never not have a need or a use for you because you will be able to show them how they are an infinite being capable of infinite shifts up and that includes their organizations so we will do relationships because of course it's not just about relationships at home it's about relationships period your relationships are super important to your success and then in december we will do leadership and organization and that piece brings together how we we trace the patterns in organizations to their leaders their teams how those interact, what are the patterns we see, what are the dynamics. And then, of course, for those, for those of you who are not just attending a module, if you're attending all of the modules for certification, we also have the, the November module, which is part of that package, and that is at Disney World. And that is from the 6th through the 9th, where we work very hard during the day and then we take that and practically apply it to play during the evening in the middle of Mickey land, in the middle of magic. And you get to understand why engaging with that kind of magic and allowing yourself to, to play and to be open and to imagine is key to some of the top executives or top performers in the world. It teaches them how to imagine their way to success, but it teaches them where, it, where the, the lack of success came from and why it rests in them 
and how to take it all the way to their own success and the success of their clients. So I want to really kind of wind down by saying, this is an optimistic time. And I know there's somebody out there who's going, oh Lord, only you. This is a really optimistic time. This is a stop and take stock of who you are time. This is a time for you to build you into something incredible. And if you do that, not only will you serve yourself and your career, you're going to serve your clients and theirs. This is a time for you to start thinking very differently. Life has changed. How lucky are you that you're in the middle of an incredible change? How lucky are you that soft skills are now going to count for as much as hard skills? Because if you're somebody who relies on hard skills, you have a whole learning field in front of you. And if you are somebody who teaches or uses soft skills, get ready. If you thought you were not going to work, you're about to be very busy. But for goodness sake, make sure that you want to be busy, that you understand what your skills are, that you grow the ones you think you need, and that you start to tell your, or to talk to yourself and be with yourself in a way that enables you to become a whole lot bigger. Uh, if you want to know more about any of the courses, of course, please go to judywilkinsmith.com. That's going to give you all the information that you need. The workshops are listed there. And if you want to know, because I know it's been a very broad skim, but if you want to understand how capable you are of changing from where you are to where you want to go, using the patterns, the language, the actions, the thoughts and the feelings to create the you that you've always wanted to be, please feel free to reach out to me directly. Uh, you will find my contact information on the website. Um, and, and let me know if you have any questions. I am always more than happy to address them. I'm, I would be happy to watch you all grow into who you can become. But bear in mind one thing, you've got to know that you can first. You've got to begin understanding that nothing in your life is a train smash ever. It is simply an ask of you to pivot into a higher, stronger, more successful you. Thank you all so much for being with me today for an hour. I'm going to sit back for about two minutes and see if you have questions. If you don't, I will sign off at the top of the hour. But if you do, I am happy to take the questions and happy to share with you. And if you want to speak, you can also unmute. Happy to take those questions too.